subscribe to my channel and press bell icon for latest updates. Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about kernel functions in support vector machine. In our previous classes, we already discussed about uh, the use of transforming our data into higher dimensions. And we already discussed about the concept of solving the optimization problem of support vector machine. So these concepts are very, very important in understanding this class. So please watch our previous classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. So coming to today's class, today's class we will just refresh the concepts of our previous classes for a minute then we go for a kernel functions. So the concepts which we already discussed here is a, let's take a two dimensional data and these positive data points and negative data points x1 and x2. So this is taken in x axis and y axis. This data set is not linearly separable data set. So we, if you apply support vector machine or logistic regression on this data set, it won't work good on this data set because this is not linearly separable data set. So what we have done for this is uh, we transform this data into higher dimensions so that the data can be linearly separable. So that what, what we used, we used a function. So phi of x1, x2 is equal to is a function x1 square, square root of 2, x1, x2, x2 square. When you transformed this data into three dimensional coordinate system, this is the data set which we got. So now if you apply support vector machine, we can separate this data linearly. That's the benefits of transforming our data into higher dimension. Is this the only function we have to use for transforming our data into higher dimension? No, we can use any function. Let's example take it as x1 cube, x1, x2, x2 square. It's also a function. We can take multiple there are different functions which we can transform our data into higher dimensions so why why we are stressing this point why we, you will understand when we discuss about the kernel functions okay so you can use any function but why we have chosen this function you will understand when we discuss the concept of kernels so this concept we already discussed in our previous class and the concept which we already discussed is dual problem this is the optimization problem dual problem which we discussed in our solving the optimization problem. This problem has been solved. We are identifying alpha values based on this function. So in this function, the important point we have to understand here is xi xj. Sigma i is equal to 1 to m, j is equal to 1 to m, xi xj. xi means inputs. So i to m means we are having in our training data set, if you are having m data points, thus comes to m data points. This meaning is pairwise dot product of input data dot product of input data means x1 x2 x1 x5 x1 x10 x1 x100 x1 x10,000 x1 x lakhs how many points we have if m is equal to 1 lakh the last one pairwise dot product of input data so based on this pairwise dot product of input data we are we are solving this optimization function so it depends on pairwise dot product of input data so this point remember we, it's very important to understand kernel functions so we are solving this optimization problem so coming to our uh, kernel functions the concept of kernel functions let's take the same example we'll take the same example and we'll explain you what's kernel function means so take this example x1 x2 just follow the steps at the end you will get a clarity what's kernel function means let's take the examples same example x1 x2 take a sample data set 1 and 5 2 and 6 we named its first data point as a, a our second data point as b you can name it as anything for understanding purpose we are naming it as a and b and we are calling this value as a1 a2 b1 b2 okay a1 a2 b1 b2 so this is our actual data means this x1 x2 is our actual data what we are doing here is uh, we are transforming this actual data into three dimensional coordinate space we called it as transformed data so this is actual data this is transformed data so how we transform this is using this function when we apply the function phi of a is equal to a1 square that is what the function is x1 square square root of 2 a1 a2 a2 square when we transform the second line into next transformed uh, space 
three dimensional coordinate space phi of b is equal to p b1 square square root of 2 b1 b2 b2 square so now do the dot product of transformed data do the dot product of transformed data so phi of a dot phi of b so this is our transformed data a1 square square root of 2 a1 a2 a2 square dot the b1 a dot b values so what we do dot product means a transpose b if you do the transpose a transpose and b if you do matrix multiplication we'll do we'll come up with this equation a1 square b1 square plus 2 into a1 b b1 a2 b2 plus a2 square b2 square this equation can be written in the format a1 b1 plus a2 b2 whole square so this can be written as a a1 a2 dot b1 b2 the same thing a1 b1 dot so if you do the transpose a this transpose this will get the same equation you try it on your own it's a simple math sir. so this transpose dot this will get the same equation this can be written as a1 a2 dot b1 b2 whole square so a1 a2 means a a1 a2 b1 b2 means b so this can be written as a dot b whole square you understand it a dot b whole square so where we started that's important we are doing dot product of transformed data transformed data space we are doing the dot product this transformed data dot product is, can be written in the format of actual data dot product a dot b means this is our actual data actual data dot product so this transformed data can data dot product value can be written in the format of actual data dot product whole square if a function can be written in this format then we call it as kernel functions otherwise we cannot call it as kernel functions so kernel functions has to satisfy this property what's the property means transformed data dot product values can be written in the format of actual data dot product values then only we call it as a kernel functions now let's check the definition of kernel function then we will understand why the kernel function should be in this format so what's the use of it so the definition of kernel function is is a function takes input as vector in original space take the data from original space but our kernel function gives the dot product value and returns dot product of vectors in transformed space so what's our function k of a comma b is equal to a dot b whole square what's the value we'll get a dot b whole square a means input from actual data b means input from actual data we are taking input from actual data and if you, we applied this kernel function what what's this function a dot b we are doing the dot product of original data and squaring it what's the value this is this is the dot product value of transformed space transformed values this is see see here we that's why we derived this here dot product value of transformed data we got it as a dot b whole square so that's why kernel is a function takes input as vector in original space and gives the dot product value of transformed space vectors that's why we call it as kernel function what's the use of this kernel function is uh, see this is the optimization problem which we are trying to solve in support vector machine here we are having xi dot xj means we are doing the dot product of actual data in place of this if you write the function kernel function xi dot comma xj what will happen this function will give the dot product value of transformed space so if you replace this dot product value with this kernel function what's happening our support vector machine we are applying support vector machine on this transformed space on this transformed space because this function is giving the value dot product value of transformed data that's why that is very important to understand so if you replace this with kernel function what's the meaning of that we are applying support vector machine model on the transformed data on the transformed space without doing any calculations have you done this calculations no we have not yet done any calculations that's the important of kernel function 
So in our last class we discussed that uh, what's the problem with this transformation? This is computationally cost. We are not doing any computations of x1 square, square root of 2, x1, x2 and x2 square. Without doing any computation, our SVM, we are applying our support vector machine on the transformed space. So this is important to understand that's why I'm stressing it again and again on the transformed space. So now our support vector machine is applied on this transformed space we will get a linearly separable data set. That's the use of kernel functions in support vector machine without this kernel functions support vector is just like a logistic regression similar to logistic regression okay. So that's the benefits of why support vector machine is so popular is we are having the concept of kernel functions it's inbuilt the kernel function concept is inbuilt in the in the optimization problem itself that's why we are solving the dual optimization problem we are having the property of kernels so that we can implement the property of kernels in the support vector machine and there are separate kernel functions for domain specific kernel functions are there and some of the mostly used kernel functions are polynomial kernel function k of x1 x2 is given as x1 dot x2 plus c whole power d in the power of d we can use any power 2 5 6 7 any power c means c as a constant you can use any constant value and a function mostly used kernel is rbf kernel means radio based function kernel so this is given as k of x1 x2 is equal to e power exponential power minus of norm x1 minus x2 whole square so divided by 2 sigma square so what's this kernel functions and we go deep into this kernel functions we will make a separate class after completing all our models we will discuss about what's these functions and what's the use of these kernel functions all those things we will make a separate video after completion of our all the models okay this is the mostly used rbf kernel is the mostly used and mostly applicable to so much of data many data sets that's why we use this rbf kernel very much hope you understand the concept if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you